I pushed a little too far. Four. Not good. Not good. Not good. My name is Chris Parker, and tomorrow I'm going to run 26 miles with the snare drum. What's going on, everybody? Back in fall 2021, Chris and I had this crazy idea to run an entire marathon wearing a marching snare drum, and we decided to document the entire journey start to finish. So this is a little bit longer than our normal videos are, but we wanted to tell the story about this crazy thing that no one's ever done before. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Chris attempting the drum marathon. So a lot of people have been asking me when I've kind of told them what, what, what we planned on doing, why? And my initial thought was, well, I do this event called rucking anyway, military term where you carry heavy, heavy amounts of weight in a backpack um, over large distances. And I had been doing that for over a year, so like carrying a drum is similar. Yeah, I, I just I feel like I've got the skill set to do it. I've run marathons before, and I've done rucking events before that have lasted upwards of six to twelve hours. So it, it felt possible. So this is not exactly an event you can just go out and try. There's a lot of training and preparation that had to go into it. Uh, but the first question that we had was, how do you even train for something that no one has ever done before? We just started up the new training program. How oh, many? 100 weighted step ups, uh, one mile, uh, 80 pounds of rucking, five mile weighted walk, 100 weighted step ups, a 60 pound uh, sandbag with me as well as 25 pounds, pounds in the bag, 100 one, one mile ruck, 25 pounds, uh, 100 pounds. more, 17 mile ruck, <laughs> and then one mile run. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, preparing for this. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of training in terms of I, I carry a ruck uh, with, with weight varying between 20 and 50 pounds. Um, in addition with a sandbag that weighs 60 pounds, um, doing some strength work, doing some endurance work. I did a little bit of running. Um, I was a marathon runner for about eight years. Um, then I took two years off to get bigger and work on this rucking things. Um, so I did a lot of that. Weirdly enough, didn't wear the drum a lot. That's gonna be one of the. <laughs> it's gonna be one of the uh, the great unknowns. I, I wore it for about an hour, um, three days ago. <laughs> How did it go? Uh, you know, it, it it's lighter than my ruck normally is. Uh, thanks, Pearl. I make light drums, um, and the carrier fits great. So I, I think it's gonna be fine. However, I was only out there for about an hour, and we're expected to be there more than that. So before Chris actually attempted the marathon wearing a drum, we wanted to try a slightly easier challenge uh, to see if it was even possible. So we decided to do a test run just three weeks before the actual event in Nashville, Tennessee, where Chris would put on 25 pounds in a backpack and attempt to walk 26 miles in under seven hours. This would give us a pretty good baseline of how his legs and his joints and his overall energy levels would respond. All right, Chris, what is happening? What are we doing here? So we're actually doing a test run before the real run is what I'm calling it. But this event is called a Go Ruck Star Course. Okay. That's based on the idea of rucking, which is a military term of whenever they have to pack gear out. Um, Gosh. And this is your backpack? It is indeed. Only weighs about 25 pounds. Weighs 25 pounds. Uh, so, um, so today you are rucking with this heavy backpack. Yep, 26 miles. It's a marathon. Which is close to a marathon. <laughs> so I have I have these things here. It's a list of points that I have to decide how I want to get to them. So there's not an official course right now. There's a bunch of us that are about 60, it looks like, uh, starting out here. Um, we're gonna pick our own way that we wanna go. That's kind of like the whole vibe of the thing. It's like navigation. So the participants of this event are given 10 spots around Nashville and they can visit them in any order as long as they're carrying the weight on their back and they have to take a selfie at each location to prove that they've gone to all of them. The time limit for the event is 11 hours, but Chris knew that we had to complete it in under seven if the marathon was gonna be possible. So this wasn't a perfect simulation, obviously. You know, the, the weights are slightly different. The backpack is actually 25 pounds. I think the pearl carrier and drum weighs in at like maybe 15 or 16 pounds. Um, so though it's slightly 
more weight, it's in a better spot on his back, whereas the drum, all the weight's out in front of you, making it a little more uncomfortable, a little more difficult to run, obviously. So not a perfect simulation, but it should give us a really good idea if this is even possible. We are going to 2020 Riverside Drive. So it's an hour walk. I'll you can there. do it faster than that. I'll Chris. get there faster. So we're gonna head out. I'll all right. See you guys in about. <gasps> we just lost the light. <laughs> see you. I said, go away. And then see you in 45 minutes. All right, Chris. Good luck. Don't die. Thank you very much. Bye. Sit in a warm car. Bye, everyone. So for this video, I'm using this thing called Google Earth Studio. So you can kind of see a little bit of the scale of where Chris is walking. This blue line here is the distance and the route that he has to travel. Obviously, he's not in the middle of the road. He's kind of off to the side. But you can kind of see as he goes along his journey where it takes him. I don't know what that thing is back there. It looks scary. Oh, my gosh crazy. After his first 45 minutes of rucking, he made it to the first point, which was this weird bird statue in a park right here. After about three miles of walking, he was still feeling pretty good. After Chris took his first selfie at the first point, he uh, came across a path right here and uh, ran into some trouble. Now, he didn't have his camera on the whole time, but he was wearing a lavalier mic that was running the whole day. Um, so here's the audio from this incident. You might want to turn it up just a little bit. Ah, I feel silly. I just walked through a pathway that was uh, covered in water and uh, I slipped. <laughs> and man, I really busted the heck out of my finger. I don't know if I can uh, flip my camera, so you're just gonna have to, can't really tell, but it started bleeding rough. Um, I just feel more silly than I feel hurt. I'm just doing all right now. I just got definitely some damage. So soaking wet in freezing November weather, Chris kept going through the park and along the river. Next point is about five miles away. This is gonna be a long one. So there are a lot of close ones in downtown and there are a lot of far ones. And I decided to do the route where we do hit all the far ones first and then we end it with a bunch of small points in Nashville. Uh, that way I can get, you know, motivated as I get closer to each point, I, I pick up my speed. And so I'll finish it with just bang, 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 bang. So yeah, I know I'm just walking through this wooded area and we'll see what happens. So Chris is essentially doing all of the hard points first. Between those first couple of selfies, he'd have hours by himself just in the woods, which is demotivating at the end, but easier in the beginning for sure. Bridge to nowhere. If I die, Please remember me. See, I'm here. My point is directly to the left of me. It's down there. And Maps wanted me to take a route on the other side of that, out there. Um, I decided to just walk on the side of the road. I try to try to make my time better. After nearly two hours of rucking, it was finally time for us to meet back up with Chris at his second selfie point. It's Chris coming out of the spooky fog. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I don't know where the house is. This looks so spooky. Chris, how long have you been going so far? Well, uh, about an hour 40. Nothing too crazy. How are you feeling so far? Oh, I'm feeling good. Uh, the only thing is going to be, it's going to be feet. If something hurts me, it's going to be feet. Gotta take, what, a selfie at every location to prove that you did yeah. it? Yeah. After two locations, Chris was nearly eight miles in, almost a third of the way. 
So you slipped and fell? Yeah. There was just like, there's a, there's a like a uh, pathway that just had a like a, I thought it was thin, but it turned out to be a little bit thicker. And I took a step and these bottoms are kind of slick. And I just slipped. Okay, this is a waterproof guy as well. Okay. So I don't know how it's gonna work, but it's also got the disinfectant on the lab mic. And it's been oozing <laughs> some yellow stuff and some red stuff. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, when I looked down, it was just like... I'll sanitize my hands when I get back to the car. <laughs> Gosh. Look at, look at the hair. It's wet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I ate shit pretty hard. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, off to a coffee shop. It was at location three that we realized we might have a problem. He'd only been going nine miles and his feet were already super blistered. Barely a third of the way done. Let's see, Let's see how she doing. Do you have a second pair of socks? In my car. Do you want to wrap it up just to be safe? Uh, nah, it'll be <laughs> blistered there. That's not it, it's this. You know, I don't actually Let me see your foot. Uh, right here? Yes. If you don't like feet, right. look away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll see how that does in the next stop. <laughs> only feet. Oh, okay, only feet again. Yeah, only feet again. And how are you feeling energy wise? Oh, energy wise, I'm great. Yeah? It's literally going to be, like I said, it's going to be feet. It's going to be if the feet can. Uh... The feet can do it. So this one is. It says 6.7 miles away. Okay. This will be the furthest, like, between points that I go, so... Okay, cool. Okay. Two hours. It's not bad. We're doing good. I'm gonna get a stroop. Okay, perfect. And you got water again? I'm going water. Okay. okay. Bye, Chris. Go, Chris, go! Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> kind of technique are we working with here? <laughs> Let's go. Bye, buddy. With Chris's blisters all taped up, he started off on his longest segment yet, six miles or two full hours without a break. Um, this map gives you a little bit of sense of scale here, but he is moving for quite a long time before he gets to his next point, and we didn't actually meet him until two points after that. I can see them behind me a little bit. Uh, those are the first people I've passed coming from the opposite direction. So, um, it looked like I crossed their path at around mile 14 for me. Um, but we'll see. Because I kind of want to mentally not be ticking down from 26. Just kind of want to take it one stop at a time. And now I'm not even considering I'm halfway done. I'm only, I'm on my way to being 40% done because I'm on my, my way to my fourth stop. Uh, it'll get progressively quicker um, between percentages, but yeah, that's uh, just wanted to give you guys that update. So instead of thinking about how much mileage he had left, Chris's strategy was to do it by points so that each point he got to would be a little bit easier and a little bit easier so he can sort of trick his brain at the end when he's exhausted. And you can see from this selfie here that 16 miles in, his energy levels started to drop. Thankfully, he was only a couple blocks away from his next stop where we were meeting him with more food and some more bandages. Unfortunately, this is also where we ran into a few more problems. Not only were his energy levels visibly dropping, but he was beginning to get some swelling in both hips, both knees. So we decided to take the ruck off, sit down, and rest, at least for a few minutes. It is, I'm gonna set this down to fix my foot one more time. Oh yeah, how is the, how is the bloody toe? Uh, it's probably getting worse. Oh. So I have more bandages than you. I might, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look and see. Yeah. How energy level wise are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing all right. Uh, definitely the hips and the knees have entered the chat. They were, they were fine. They were just like, don't worry about us. We good. Um, can you get a new bandaid? Yes. Just for that. So what have you learned so far about how you're going to do the next one? Um, probably not these socks, to be honest. 
So, sport bean, because we're, we're over halfway. Sport beans. Sport. Beans, but for sports. There's more in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's so good. Looking close at the map. You got four to go. So, yeah, you... you and they're in a cluster. This one's going to hurt me. But this is the last very long ruck I have. Yeah. And it's 4.4 miles away. Yeah, it'll be good. Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's go. Okay. This is definitely the most pain that we had seen Chris in so far, but thankfully this was the last long segment. If he could make it to this next four mile checkpoint, we're pretty sure he could muscle out the last few points that are all clustered together in downtown Nashville. For those of you that saw the Fireflies video, this is where it was shot. Right there. What do you know? I knew Chris could use all the help he could get, so I decided for the next stop, I was gonna make him a motivational poster. How's your overall energy levels? Oh, they're a little low. I think we get to your next one. It says 32 minutes, but it's 1.6 miles away. 25. Chris was definitely approaching the end of his limits as far as how far he could walk with that much weight on his back. But the good news was he just had a few points left and they were all fairly close together throughout the downtown area. We met him again at this sort of statue thing talking to him we kind of realized that he was sort of resigned to the pain he'd kind of gotten over the hump the initial shock of how much his body was hurting and kind of moved into this sort of weird acceptance of what the next two hours were going to be like for him as he sat down to take one more rest i asked so chris do you have any thoughts on the marathon now with the drum and he goes i have thoughts it's gonna, it's just gonna suck but you know we out here so we loaded him up one more time as he hobbled off for the last hour of the event. The last couple of stops were the Capitol building, which he reached just under the seven hour mark, and then finally to the Country Music Hall of Fame. And with all 10 locations checked off the list, the only thing he had to do now was make it back to the starting line. And shout out to Kat for making the walk with him. About one mile to go. Yeah, right on a mile. All right. And that one. Okay. So. I'm going to go with you because okay. we're meeting at that end point. Okay. So I figured it'd be easy to just walk the last one with you. How are the feet? Feet are, okay. feet are rough. <laughs> feet, are, feet are not happy, but not happy. And with the excitement of finally being done, Chris came in at a time of seven hours and 19 minutes, just over 26 and a half miles total. And with the test run complete, we sat down with Chris to see how he felt. Accomplished. I did my goal. I did 26 miles. Um, that's the furthest I've ever gone. So I'm, I'm proud of that. And I, and I feel really good about the only thing that's a problem is definitely the blisters. Um, these are pretty rough. Um, I won't be shocked if I take a week off, um, which only gives me two weeks to get accustomed to carrying a drum long distances um, and figuring out which sock and shoe combo works. I think Jake will probably feel more confident about this attempt than me, weirdly enough. Yes, I definitely do.
I proved to myself I can get over that mental hump. And then especially having Jake with me. Like he will have to run slash walk with me for the entire event. And yes, I did have to run a marathon wearing a backpack full of gear and food and holding a camera the whole time, but that is nowhere near as hard as wearing a drum. And now that we knew the event was possible in under eight hours, we needed a plan to do it in under six. Now, if you're not familiar with marathons, a six hour marathon doesn't necessarily mean that you have to run the whole time. You can kind of do a combination of walking and running, uh, but you do need some kind of a strategy to make sure that you don't run out of energy. For every hour that you're out there, you're a little more tired, a little more fatigued, a little more overheated. So we can't be out there too long, but if we go too fast to run out of energy, it's a fine balance. So here was our pacing strategy. We decided we we're gonna to try to shoot for 13 minute miles, which would put us at about, what do we say? That puts us at six? No, almost six. Almost, like, almost six. Five hours and 45 minutes or something. Yeah, so that's what we're shooting for. Hoping to be faster than that for sure. Uh, the marathon course cuts us off at seven hours. So we have to beat that. I think we're gonna try to run every mile on the mile for five minutes. So we'll run for about five minutes and then we'll walk it out after that run the rest of the distance until we hit the mile marker and then we'll run again. Um, don't know how long we're gonna keep that strategy. Um, that might be too long to run with a drum. Can you hit it for three? Three minutes. We're gonna try. We're, we're gonna try. try for three minutes. Right. Try. Here we go. Here we go. Actually, nope. All right. That's pretty close. That's pretty good though. Yeah. We might have to break it into smaller segments, um, but we'll see. Chris, I'm turning on the light. Go for it. Wait, I don't know how. <laughs> there we go. What time is it? 3.50 a.m. No time. Let's go. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, fe I'm feeling all right. Yeah. I'm feeling all right. It's not as tired as I was expecting. I mean, we That's didn't... how I feel. I, I got good rest last night. Which is crazy. It's always like day before marathon. It's like get five hours of sleep, wake up, feel refreshed. <laughs> day before work, get eight and a half hours of sleep. Tired. All right, so this challenge comes with, I guess, three rules. Uh, rule number one is no one's allowed to carry the drum but me. It's gotta be me and me alone. Rule number two is I'm not allowed to take the drum off even if we rest. So like if there's a time where I decide to stop to try to catch my breath, I can't take the drum off and ground it, set it on the ground. I've gotta keep it on my body until I cross the finish line. Uh, and rule number three is I have to finish uh, these 26.2 miles in under seven hours. All right, Chris, how are you feeling? All right, cold. <laughs> it's a little chilly. Um, feeling good, feeling good. We'll see. We'll just see. If you've ever done a large marathon before, you know that when they say, ready, set, go, and you're towards the back, you're probably not going to get to the start line for at least three or four minutes. All right, here we go. We're gonna at least walk to the start line. I can't tell if it's like a staggered start or if we're just, or, or if it's already started and we're just that far back. <laughs> now the race organizers know this and there's actually RFID chips in our number bibs that don't actually start our time until we cross the starting line. that, we were off. Alright, where are we at? 4.53.
How's it feeling so far? I think we're good. We'll go ahead and walk. Okay. We're just gonna play. with the drum. I'm impressed. Oh, thank you. All right. First running spell. How's it feel on the shoulders? It's not too bad. Not too bad. A lot of the back. A lot of the upper back. Shoulders feel good though, so okay. we're, good. we're good on that front. Lower back okay? Lower back's great. Feet. Feet good. All right. Feet feel great. Gorgeous. Pretty awesome. Actually, we're going to go ahead and not get power hot. Mile one at 13.36. Behind the goal pace, but not too bad. <laughs> 30 seconds left, Chris. All right. Three, two, one. And that's five minutes. Right. And it got us 0.6 of the mile. All right. How are you feeling so far? Almost mile two. I'm feeling good. I. I would feel better if it wasn't so crowded. That's the only thing. Yeah, it'll if we spread had out. a lot more real estate to work with, I would feel less pressured in the walk. Yep. And I would also feel less inclined to really go for it on the run. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, we're, we're pushing pace a little in terms of run so that we can get a good amount of distance. And like whenever yeah. we see open space, I want to take it. Um, so definitely second half. I mean, there's there's a good chance that second half we change our race strat entirely. Okay, but um, if we're feeling good, maybe the paces will just be a little slower, but the same amount of time. Yeah. Okay. Well, check back in as it gets brighter. Yep. All right, we're coming up on mile two. Ready for this spin out here? Stick trick, y'all. Oh, let's go. Here we go. Ugh. And we're running. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Let's go. <laughs> go, Chris. Go. Missed it. It'll be okay. I'll go. I'll get the second one. Oh no, there's another table. There's another table. I'm going for it. Go for it. <laughs> we'll just go a little bit further. 508. We'll go a little bit further since we walked. Got some edge to get that. And we'll call it. Yeah, the hill is where you. You can leave here on the plane. <laughs> Almost to mile, what, three? Yep. And, uh, you know, like halfway there. Yeah, halfway, pretty much. Are you tired yet? So tired. Well, that's a shame because we have many more, many more to go. And the five minutes of running we were doing equated to a little over half of the mile each time. So we were running like 0.6 miles and walking maybe 0.4, uh, which might have been a little ambitious in the beginning. Good job, bud. That's for you. Mile four, Chris. Are you ready? Ooh. Here we go. Hey, and we're off. Five more minutes of running. Good. Water. Great job, Dad. We're at an hour officially. We have been out here one hour. All right. How is everything feeling? Check in on the shoulders. Shoulders feel feel good. Shoulders feel fine. All the joints on the lower half. Knee, knee's gonna be it. I can already tell, right knee. Woo! Woo! Yes! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Somebody who's happy to be out here. Right knee, but that was my issue uh, in the ruck as well. Running. Yeah. Nice drum. Thanks, man. Thank you. Run walked six miles. Six miles. Feeling good? Feeling good. All right. <sighs> Here we go. At just under a quarter of the way done, we were still pushing pace a little too much. We were trying to hit 13 minute miles. We were coming in at 11 something, 12 something, but we decided to keep pushing at this pace at least until the halfway point. One, two, yeah. I want two, three, four. <laughs> right at 25% done, Chris was still feeling really good. Mile seven. Mile seven. It's happening. Here we go. Good job, runners. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing great. We're trying our best. Oh, 
They were so happy. <laughs> Drumming brought such joy. It was finally late enough in the morning that the race officials let us drum a little bit, and that got Chris really excited, and he ended up running mile eight a little bit too fast. <laughs> Maybe a lot too fast. One third. Mile nine. I will not be as happy on two thirds. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Let me see. Thank you. And we're coming up on mile 10. Thank you. I still like the dog that went by a little bit better, but you might be my That's okay. That's acceptable. We'll take, we'll take second place. Good job. Thank you. Very mile 10. Right. Teens. Teens. Go, Chris, go. We in the teens now. All right. What do you think? Uncrustable at the halfway? Uncrustable at the halfway. We're at mile 11, two miles from the halfway point. Tell me about that last mile. That was, that was tough. I don't know why, uh, legs, legs are just feeling it pretty bad. And same with uh, the lower back that I was talking about. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, there's a chance that we'll abridge the five minute portion of the running, not the running itself. I think the running's fine. We might just- Do less than five at a time. Yeah, we might just shorten the five minute segments. Um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. I need to like overcome the mental barrier of it's totally fine to take the second half slow. Like, so we'll, we'll see. I think you're saying it's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Mile 12. Here we go. All right, checking in. Whew. Yeah, the lower back is gonna be the, the uh, determining factor of how much longer we can run. Uh, it's just a, it's a muscle that's activating whenever whenever you run, and it's again a two year long injury. So like, you just got to keep an eye out on it. It's still okay. I can just tell like that's gonna be what gives out before anything else. All right, we've been out a little over two and a half hours, and we're already almost halfway. So we're a little ahead of goal pace. So it might take it a little easier uh, in, the second half. in the second half. Yeah. We, are, we are way set. As long as we can maintain even a little bit slower than this, we're gonna be fine. We're cooking. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Chris, halfway. Halfway. Halfway at 242, pretty good. Although technically the time is 237.30. So we are generously ahead we are crushing. of our goal pace. Chris is not even a little bit tired. Well, Chris might have been a little bit tired, but we decided still to drop the pace by about two minutes per mile since we were way ahead of our time and we didn't want Chris's joints or lower back to give out. All right, time for an uncrust. As soon as I grabbed this, I immediately became hungry. <laughs> How was your uncrusty, Chris? <laughs> so good. Mm. That's the best part about marathon, you get to eat stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I brought it. Oh. If I have to bring a bunch of camera gear, I'm at least going to pack snacks. Yes. Mm. These are so good. Smuckers are killing it. That is the best sign I have ever seen. Fantastic. Seems interesting enough for you two. Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Our museum wishes you a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a great day as well. Oh, it will. As we passed the 15 mile marker, Chris told me his lower back was really starting to hurt and we were barely over halfway done. We're almost almost 16 miles in, uh, changing the pacing strategy just a little. Yeah, so um, the, the injury is starting to flare up like lower back whenever I run. Uh, when we walk fast, it's doing well and just carrying this drum, it's doing well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of not worry about a time. We're just gonna run every mile on the mile um, until I feel like, you know, all right, that's enough, and then we'll slow down. So instead of running exactly five minutes every time we saw a mile marker, we decided to run until Chris's lower back hurt, which was generally a little bit less than five minutes. I'll try to reach 
We're... Oh. A croissant? We got a croissant in the bag. Croissant? How's your mile 16 croissant business? It's so good. All right. We just hit three and a half hours. Three, two, one. Boom. Now, it has been three and a half hours. Poor rehearsal. That looks tough. <laughs> yeah, man. Where'd you march? Caballeros, DCA. Oh, oh yeah. Stop. Blue coats and phantom. Drum core. <laughs> Drum core. So we're, we're past the halfway point of the, we should be halfway, technically. Time wise. to the race officials. Yeah. And we're approaching mile 17, so. So we're four miles ahead of exactly. where we need to be right now. So did really good. Um, we're gonna try to take it nice and easy on the rest of the way out. All right, mile 17, ready to run? <clears throat> Here we go. So mile 17 was the first mile that we did that was slower than 14 minutes. Chris was running almost five minutes, maybe three or four minutes every time we hit a mile marker. But after three and a half hours, he was definitely coming up against the limitations of the drum pulling on his lower back. And down. All right. Okay, mile 18. I don't know, there's, there's a way that like the noise stops when you just have like that one thing that you have to do. You just have to take one step in front of the other until you reach your end goal and it gives you a sense of calm and peace. That's what I'm hoping for tomorrow as well. Like 26 miles will find something out about ourselves. It'll be cool. Okay, Chris, can you hit it for three? Three minutes. We're gonna try. We're gonna try for three minutes. Right? Here we go. Here we go. Come on up on the turnaround. Or the 75% down mark. We just hit four hours. It's about 30 seconds ago. This was the point where everything changed for Chris. After nearly 20 miles of running, he was not excited about running anymore. Unfortunately, we still had several hours to go. That's pretty close. That's pretty good though. Yeah. All things considered. Taking a decent walker. All right, the final turnaround. Go, the Chris, long, go. The longest buzz. Oh. And the camera guy. Love for the camera guy. Love for the camera. It's the second person. I'm so proud. Chris, what's about to happen? We are about to get donuts. Donuts. <laughs> From sweet strangers. Strangers with donuts. I did it with the drum on too. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. More, more, thank you. More, more, okay, more. Okay, thank you. Mm. How was your go that? I got a blueberry one and a chocolate one. Oh, the chocolate one it gives me life. Yeah. I still think I'm negative calories for the morning. For sure. But oh, it tasty donut. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, my watch says 414 on the dot and we are about to pass mile 20. My strategy as Chris's running partner was just to stay as positive as possible. I knew he was in pain, I knew he was hating it, but I figured if I could stay positive, some of that positivity might help him along. All right, Chris, Hi. coming up on mile 21. Counting on one hand, how many more times do you have to run? Exactly. We're into some big boy numbers now. We're coming up. It's 428.42 is our current time. 428.22? Yep. All right, let's go. And here we go, launch. It was at this point in the race where everything was starting to hurt a little bit. He was getting blisters on his feet. He was cramping in his quads. His lower back was flaring up. His knees were hurting. His ankles were hurting. His overall energy levels were lower. He was low on calories and he just needed to hold on a little bit longer. Okay, we've been out here four and a half hours. Chris, what's going on with you, with all the things? Well, it's definitely, the fatigue is real. Uh, blister on the foot, still very real. Uh, we're starting to get some like muscle cramps in the quads. Uh, now both of them, the right and the left, uh, whenever we run. 
And as someone who's not carrying a drum, I feel great. This is easy, <laughs> it's fine, no problem. We're just gonna be fine, it's gonna be great. <laughs> All right, mile 22, Chris, here we go. Mile 22. Mile 23, here we go. <laughs> When we hit the five hour mark, Chris's mood and energy took a huge dip. Something mentally about being out there five hours. Right at the five hour mark, we have been moving constantly without breaks for five straight hours. Chris has not taken off the drum right. in five straight hours. Ooh. All right, Chris, it's time mm -hmm. for the final uncrustable. I can't wait. It's a good time. Mm. I hear it's different at mile 23. Mm -hmm. All right, we are coming up on mile 24. Ah, How are you feeling, Chris? Not good. Not good? Not good. Not feeling great. Yeah. Oh. Chris was in pretty bad shape at this point. Like, he stopped doing the pacing strategy entirely and just kind of ran when he was able to and then would walk when his back started hurting so badly that he couldn't run anymore. So we kind of did this alternating walk, run, walk, run. This was the first point where Chris considered maybe his back was gonna seize up so badly that he would not be able to continue running and walking. It wasn't an effort problem. His muscles were just starting to shut down. Not good, not good still. Oh, doubt, doubt, doubt y'all. Do you have water? Level of energy. I would love two waters if possible. Oh, you can have three. All right, come on, Let's play for us. His legs were cramping every time we ran, but I knew if I didn't push him along, he was gonna run out of energy from just holding the drum on his body. Mile 25, oh. in sight. How we doing? Just waiting for that end. <laughs> it's bad in that light, when you're just waiting for it to be over. So, mantra is, it'll be about 20 minutes, and it'll all be over. There we go. Oh. Like, I think I can do it, but there is this giant shadow of doubt. Like, I don't know. Like, I've never attempted something of this magnitude before. So, you know, you can, you can train in all these different ways, but until you actually strap up, put yourself in the real thing, you have no idea what it's gonna be like. All right. Whew. Nice done. I pushed a little too far to try to stay down the hill. Oh man. And quarter mile to go, third of a mile, somewhere like there. How you feeling, Chris? Delusional. Better than, better than you were half a mile ago. But feeling better because we're so close. We are so close. Ah! <laughs> Let's go. And then it happened. You get that little burst of energy you get when you see mile 26 and know that you only have 0.2 miles to go. Let's go! I gotta take this off. May the Lord help me. Awesome job! Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god. Oh. Oh. Sub 545, Chris. Oh my god. Sub 545. Uh, that sucks. Don't do that, kids. Oh my god. Don't do it. I mean, I'm, I'm happy I did it. I'm so shocked. I thought for sure 630 would be like good cooking. I'm a little concerned that like, I'm gonna feel this for a few weeks. Uh, so it goes without saying that this video was very difficult to make from Chris having to actually prepare for the event and do the trials and actually run the event itself to all the editing. It's a little bit longer obviously than most of the videos that we make. So uh, 
If you could subscribe, that would mean a lot. We spend a lot of time and effort on these videos. And the best way you can support us is by liking the video, subscribing. It tells the YouTube algorithm that you enjoyed this content and it'll show it to more people. And it's certainly the best way to support us for free. And thank you again to Pearl for making the lightest, most comfortable drums. If you can run a marathon in these drums, you can certainly wear them for a couple hours of rehearsal. Last thing, Chris is probably gonna hate me for this, but are there any other crazy challenges that you want us to try? I've thrown out doing the whole thing with quads or a, or a 32 inch bass drum or running even further or trying to beat the time, but those all seem kind of simple and boring. So if you have any ideas, definitely let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you might like some of our other videos, which I'll link. Um, but if not, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.